Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, as always, I like to thank you for uh, stopping in and checking it out. And uh, hopefully uh, you stick around. Hopefully you watch. Uh, and yes, I did. I did shave my beard. Thank you for you. Yeah, you for you noticing the person on the gray couch there with a weird. Was that plaid? Is that a plaid pillow? I did shave my beard up. Man, it's awesome. It's getting getting pretty long, so I thought I'd uh, I'd trim it down a little bit. So man. I got some cool viewers. Uh, today we're going to dive into uh, some GameCube games. I got about 10 of them. Uh, revisiting to see if the GameCube is still relevant, if it's still fun. Uh, 10 titles that were my favorites back in the day. I uh, haven't played a lot of them in a while. I've just been too busy and I've been on a PlayStation 2 kick lately, so shameless plug. Uh, I have a PlayStation 2 video I just did a few weeks ago that if you haven't checked out yet, uh, started finally getting into that library. So just been busy, busy with uh, different systems, different games and making some vids. But um, yeah, we're going to dive into some uh, GameCube today, visit some titles, see if uh, see the love is still there. I'm sure it is. So, uh, But as always, man, I appreciate you all watching and uh, let's get going. All right, here we go. Kicking off uh, with the Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2. Uh, this is a 2001 flight action game launch title. This is a launch title with the GameCube. Uh, set in the Star Wars galaxy and spans all three original trilogy Star Wars films. Play as either Luke Skywalker or Wedge Antilles. And as the game progresses, Skywalker and Antilles and the Rebel Alliance will fight the Galactic Empire in 10 missions across various planets. Yeah, I love these games. I love these games more than I can express verbally right now to you. And we'll, we should probably just leave it at that. It's a family channel. This is a family channel, I think. Dude, I don't know. Do families watch this channel? <laughs> I don't even know who watches this channel, honestly. Um, but yeah, I love all the Star Wars games for the most part. I started playing originally on the Sega CD, and that one was pretty decent. Uh, chock full of FMV, which was the, the trend at the time. But man, the GameCube ones for me are on another level. This is two, and then I also own three, which I don't remember if that one was as well received or not. I don't know, but I love it, so I don't care. The controls on this one too, very responsive, especially when you're tripping up the uh, ads. All right, F Zero GX, a 2003 racer. Is the successor to Zero X and continues the series difficult high speed racing style, retaining the basic gameplay and control system from the Nintendo 64 game. Ah, uh, yes, the N64. <laughs> uh, it has a heavy emphasis placed on track memorization and reflexes. F Zero GX also features a story mode element where the player assumes the role of F Zero pilot Captain Falcon through nine chapters while completing various missions. That was actually a cool element, I thought. I uh, was actually surprised when I saw it in the game the first time I played it. A little something different, a little something something. Change it up. Cause Lord knows I'm not good at the racing, man. God, this is like pinball. <laughs> I do my best though. And the, the, the fun of these games for me is to just see how better I can do each race. So, but for the most part, I'm god awful. What? A Sonic game in a Nintendo video? Unsubscribe! 
Rob's a loser, man. We're out of here. This is Sonic Gems. I like this because of this dumb fighting game, actually. So uh, it's the only reason why I got it. Uh, it's got a lot of games on there that you can get, you know, on other collections. Um, this was a compilation from 2005 that covered more of the obscure Sonic games for the various consoles, which included the Sega CD, Sega Saturn, and uh, the Game Gear. Uh, it features Sonic CD, Sonic Fighters, which I just showed you, and then here. You can see through the list as I, I put this in the video too. So I can shut up. Shut up, Rob. But yeah, the fighting one was only an arcade release. It was only an arcade exclusive, but you can get it on the GameCube and the PS2 and that's it. So, so it's kind of neat to have just for that. They had another uh, compilation, which was a Sonic Mega Collection Plus, and I have that on the uh, Xbox. So that's if you have both of these, you're pretty much covered in all Sonic aspects. So here's me stupidly trying to go through the manual. I didn't know what I was doing. So the first one didn't come out so well. But I think I turned the pages on this one. Yep. And then there's just some art. Just kind of going through the disc. Sorry, just kind of showing what was in in here. It's a weird looking stomach. What the hell did, he, what the hell did Sonic eat? <laughs> uh, here's SSX on tour, man. I am a huge SSX fan. My favorite one uh, being on the Xbox, uh, which is tricky. Um, but this one is pretty good as well. Uh, this one is unique to the GameCube. Uh, because it has the addition of the Mario characters. Uh, so this is a 2005 release. Features snowboarding and skiing. Uh, the gameplay in this one is similar to that in SSX3. Uh, similar controls, overall aim of events remain the same. Snowboard down a mountain while gaining points for various tricks that can be performed. Uh, they added a new mechanic uh, in this one compared to previous entries. And then the addition of skiing alongside snowboarding. Players can now create their own characters as well. And then, yeah, again, they're adding Mario, Luigi, and I think uh, Princess Peach. You have to let me know. I think that I think it's her. But yeah, this was fun. I had to, no music in this one. EA Big and a lot of these games during this time. Absolute amazing soundtracks. Uh, all licensed music, though. And uh, so we just, I could only leave in the sound effects and maybe Mario grunting or falling. So <laughs> sorry, everyone. And Mara's running in everybody. God, what a jerk. Ooh, this is one of my favorites. I love this one. I never really was a big, like, real-time tactics person, but... Uh, this is a 2005 release, Battalion Wars. You control a vast array of units, ranging from infantry, armored divisions, and aircraft, completing missions through a mixture of unit management and strategic planning. In the game story, you operate as a commander of a battalion, duh, duh, who initially takes part in a conflict between two nations that culminates in an eventual alliance between them. So, spoiler alert, everyone: the people you fight now, you'll become friends with later. So, if you haven't if you haven't played this now or by now, and you've just learned that, I, I'm very sorry. But this would later spawn a sequel that I also have as well on the Nintendo Wii. A lot of hours in this one. It's really fun. I love the graphics, the colors, uh, just the characters, everything about it, man. It's just really fun. This is a fun game. Those blue 
jerry cans will repair damage to your recon. Oh, geez, cram it, lady. We get it. <laughs> this is, it's not my first war. <laughs> yeah, I almost started the video off with Luigi. I don't know if people would have lost their mind if I did that or start it with Sonic. But this is, dude, this game's awesome, though, man. I like all of them, actually. Uh, this was a 2001 launch title, uh, considered an action-adventure game. And our Marion character here, Luigi, uh, receives a letter informing him he has won a mansion as the grand prize in a contest. Oh, man. It's like those Ed McMahon days. All of my problems are solved. Luigi, though, realizing he never entered a contest, is puzzled. And when he arrives at the mansion, he discovers that it is haunted with ghosts. And Mario is trapped inside. I'm still trying to finish uh, this one. And then I stupidly started uh, the third one on the Switch. And I'm stuck on that one, <laughs> so I might have to go back to this one. Because while filming this uh, clip, uh, I actually made progress. I was actually stuck on this one too, but then I got past it. You wouldn't know it, though, from me just getting slammed in the face by that door. But All right, here is uh, Wave Race, Blue Storm. This was a late 2001 release. And that's right, a jet ski racing game. I have to put that in there in case people aren't familiar with jet skis. Some of these, I don't know, man. When I research these games and I find like stuff that I can say or whatever, like uh, I put that in there, and I guess it's more my fault than anything. Uh, this was a sequel to what was perhaps the best racer on the N64, uh, Wave Race. Blue Storm premieres as the first racer on Nintendo's next generation console. Uh, and this is actually the third in the series that was originally started in 1992 by the Game Boy one. I don't know if you guys played the Game Boy one, but um, it's all right. It's it's as you know it's as good as it's gonna get, being it that it's the Game Boy. But uh, you'll be racing atop a bed of dynamically changing waves. Gamers must navigate their way through eight different environments under random weather conditions, including the powerful storm setting. I'm guessing it's a blue storm. <laughs> Or wouldn't be on the title. <laughs> I, don't know. I never made it that far, so I tried to edit out all my mistakes, but I think I left one in there. I definitely hit a lot of walls, and this one's really fast. But I love it, man. I love to see how far I can get and how better I can do each race. So, and I think that's the point of these games, you know? Just do the best you can. Whoa. Big fan of uh, the Star Fox series. I know Star Fox Adventures gets a, a lot of flack, but um, and that's not this game, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I do like it, though. I like all of them. I've been a fan of all of them, even the Wii U one. Uh, this is a 2005 release, and they have a mix of 3D scrolling shooter and third-person shooter. Uh, the story goes, one year has passed since disaster was averted on Saria and Andross's armies have been almost eradicated. But now a new threat has risen from the darkness of space, the Aperoids, creatures bent on assimilating all beasts and machines into their corrupted hive mind. They are spreading relentlessly and Team Fox is the only thing standing between them and the utter ruin of the Lilat system. There's nothing I hate more than utter ruin. This is, um, yeah, I like it though. I try to show in a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, the videos, you don't want to make these videos too long because people end up fast forwarding and whatever. And, and I get that, man. I mean, the attention span of America is definitely on a decline <laughs> these days. So uh, we can only tolerate like one minute short form vids or whatever and then just keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Uh, but yeah, these are great. 
Here, the third person shooting aspect I thought was really fun. I like that they mixed it up like that. It, it makes for a fantastic game in my opinion. You're, you're really checking a lot of boxes in this one for me, so. this cool tank which I forgot how to drive <laughs> so it's kind of just pressing buttons and figuring out how to move it has an awesome hover feature too which I, I thought was pretty uh, pretty neat once I figured that out again yeah totally saved her but it's too late she bailed Such majestic music too. Smash anyone and anything that gets in your way. Hell yeah, brother. It's beautiful Joe! This is an awesome game from 2003, a side-scrolling beat-em-up. And is divided into seven stages or episodes, interspersed with storyline cutscenes. And bookended by opening and ending cinematics. The setting is divided between Earth and Movie Land, the game's fictional world of films. The game story concerns our friend Joe here, an avid moviegoer whose girlfriend Sylvia is kidnapped during a film starring Joe's favorite superhero, Captain Blue. Joe is shortly thereafter thrust into Movie Land, where Sylvia is taken by the villainous group known as Jadao. After accepting a special V watch, no giggling, stop the giggling. From Captain Blue, Joe transforms into the Tokonetsu style persona, Beautiful Joe, and sets out to rescue her. Yeah, great controls, great colors, great everything. I don't know, this game's, I love it. I've got all of them. There's actually a third one which I found in Florida a while back that's kind of like a Smash Brothers Brawl style game. I find that interesting. These are fun, man. And finishing the list, and to answer everyone's question that I asked in the beginning, yes, the GameCube is still relevant. Mario Kart Double Dash is a 2003 kart racer. The second best-selling GameCube of all time it is similar to previous titles with characters from the Marioverse racing against each other on Mario-themed tracks. For the first time in a series, two characters are selected to race against or to race together, sorry, in the same kart with one assigned to drive and the other to use the special items. They can switch positions at any time during the race. It has 20 playable different characters and you've got 10 pairs available. Each pair has a unique item. There are four game modes in here, Double Dash, Grand Prix, Time Trial, Versus, and Battle. Awesome game, man. This is the first game on Nintendo GameCube I actually played online. Really fun series. This one though, I have a lot of mileage on this one, no pun intended. All right, there we go. 10 titles, like every video I do, always 10. Maybe I should do like five. Maybe I could get more videos out that way instead of working on longer videos. I could shorten my time too. I don't know. I never know. It's the beauty of this channel. I have no idea what I'm doing. And you guys watch, and that is awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. You can't go wrong with Star Wars. A uh, huge fan of Luigi's Mansion. I'm still working on uh, three for the Switch, and they're re releasing, or I think it's a remake, I don't remember. Uh, part two from the uh, 3DS. I think it's from the 3DS, yeah. And uh, that's coming out of the Switch soon. I'll, I'll try and dive into that if I have time. But cause I, n I never played that one. I missed that one. Um, but yeah, Battalion Wars has always been a favorite of mine. I actually have it on the Wii as well. 
Um, and yeah, SSX, uh, threw that in there just cause I have it on multiple systems. The GameCube one though, being very, um, unique with the Mario characters and there to snowboard as well. But yeah, I don't know. Anyways, let me know in the comments, uh, if, what's your favorite GameCube games. You got, uh, some GameCube games that maybe I'm missing out on. Uh, my library is not big. I mostly just collect, uh, the ones from my past that I love the most and that I know I'll replay. I'm not trying to get all of them. Plus, it'd be insane right now, man, because GameCube, like a lot of retro gaming, uh, the prices are like bonkers nuts right now. So so forget that. Um, but yeah, man, as always, I appreciate you all watching and uh, we'll catch you on next vid. And thanks.